Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Amen. We, we honor the Lord Jesus Christ, who is indeed the God of our lives. Amen. We honor him for being such a great God over the years. He has ordered our lives. He has been a help. He has been a father. He has been a sustainer. And nobody can do it like our God. And we honor him today. Somebody just tell him thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Just before I continue, Mother Summers, where's Mother Summers? Come on here, Mother Summers. We're going to pray for your body. Just come on here. Good night, Ella Brownfield. Amen. Deacon Phyllis Elder Lloyd. Just, just lay hands on. Can we believe together? Shut it. Oh, shut it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Great God, great God, great God, great God, great God. What a great God, what a great God. Jesus Christ, our King. 
Amen. If you have your Bibles, Amen, as a prelude to our consecration, I want to, by the grace of God, to address a particular issue that all mankind has to face. 1 Kings chapter 21 and verse 25. 1 Kings 21 verse 25. If you find it, say amen. Let's read together. But there was none like unto Ahab, which did sell himself to work wickedness in the sight of the Lord, whom Jezebel his wife stirred up. And he did very abominably in following idols according to all things as did the Amorites whom the Lord cast out before the children of Israel. Everybody say Amen. amen. I want to talk about the deceivableness of sin. Sin. Everybody say sin. You may be seated in the presence of God. you study the book of 1st and 2nd Kings, the first half of the book gives us the life of King Solomon. Under his leadership, the children of Israel reached glory. However, in Solomon's later years, his zeal for God diminishes. Throughout scriptures, there are warnings to the church that we must be careful that we, when we get older, in knowing God, that we don't take Him for granted. It is very easy to take God for granted. And the warning is there that continuity is important. That the same zeal in which you had your first confrontation with God that it should remain. Stand fast in the liberty. Amen. Continue with the zeal that God gave you from the beginning. That's why the writer said, the race is not for the swift, nor the battle for the strong, but he that endureth to the end. And so Solomon in his latter years, his zeal for God diminishes and Solomon ended up with a divided heart and a divided heart left a divided kingdom and so the emphasis then is the fact that our hearts should be singularly towards God And so Israel, because of Solomon's divided heart, ended up with a divided kingdom. And the two kingdoms were warring against each other. Brothers, strife against each other. And not only that, the two nations 
were disobedient towards God. And they were contrary towards the precepts and the prophets that came to them. The Bible speaks to us that after the death of Solomon, the word of the Lord came to pass. For the Lord visited Solomon and said, I'm going to rent the kingdom out of your hands. But however, the Lord says, because of my servant David, I will not do it in your days. But soon after the death of Solomon, the kingdom rent in twain. The northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. The northern kingdom was plagued with apostasy. A man by the name of Jeroboam sets up a false system of religion. He created two gods, one in Dan and one in Bethel. He ordained his own priests to minister at his shrine. Man-made religion. And Jeroboam convinced the people that they don't need to go to Jerusalem to worship. And the people believed and left Jehovah and bow themselves down to idols. When the Lord strictly commanded them, thou shalt not bow yourself down to graven images. On the other hand, the southern kingdom was plagued by idolatry. And most of the kings of Judah and Israel were ungodly and idolatrous leaders, murderers. But in our text this morning, I want to deal with one of the kings of Israel. And his name is King Ahab. The first mistake he made was that he married a heathen wife. And the Lord said, you shall not marry into strange nations. There was a reason for that. For the Lord knew that these heathen people would have brought their idolatrous worship into Israel. And so they married into the daughter of the king of the Zidonians. She brought in heathen worship. She introduced to Israel idolatry. Israel now worshipped Balaam and the host of heaven. Idols. We live in a culture that is obsessed with fame and renown. Yes, sir. A civilization that is committed to create their own celebrities. Yes, the Bible is careful to warn us about these things. Beloved, allow me just to take a little time. It was a few years ago, one of the most popular TV shows was American Idol. Then we came about Canadian Idol. Now they use these terms loosely, but there's a spirit to it that is affecting our society. But the Bible says that idolatry is of the heart. And the prophet Ezekiel speaks to us. When the prophet said that the Lord said, Son of man, these men have set up their idols in their hearts. And 
and put a stumbling block of their iniquity before their face. Should I be inquired by them? The Lord said, Therefore speak unto them, and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord, Every man of the house of Israel that set up his idols in his hearts, and put it a stumbling block of his iniquity before his face. When cometh to a prophet, the Lord says, I will answer you. When you have idols in your hearts, and you go to my prophet to inquire of me, the Lord says, I will answer you. Glory be to God. The Lord says that I may take the house of Israel in their own hearts because they are estranged from me and through their idols God said they have left me. Therefore say unto the house of Israel thus said the Lord God repent and turn yourselves from your idols and turn away your faces from your abominations. The Lord is speaking. For every one of the house of Israel or of the stranger that sojourneth in Israel which separated himself from me, Jehovah, and set up his idols in his heart and put up a stumbling block of his iniquity before his face and cometh to a prophet to inquire of him concerning me. The Lord repeats himself again and said, I, the Lord, will answer him by myself. And I, Jehovah, will set my face against that man. And I will make him a sign and a proverb. And I will cut him all from among the midst of my people. And they shall know that I am the Lord, their God. Hallelujah. So the Apostle Paul warns the church concerning idolatry. When he writes to the church at Rome, he says, you have exchanged the truth of God for a lie. The truth that you once know, you exchange it for a lie. And you worship and serve the creature more than the creator who's blessed forever more. And he says, God gave them over to a reprobated mind. A mind that will never be convicted again. A mind that will never pursue God again. A mind that the blood will never affect it anymore. A reprobated mind. That God gave them over. But in our text this morning, the Bible gives us a profile of Ahab. There is none like unto Ahab, which did sell himself to work wickedness in the sight of God. The man sold his soul to do wickedness. He was consumed by evil. His spirit was driven to do evil. There was no good in his thoughts. He rebelled against God. He had no desire to please Almighty God. 
He sold himself to do wickedness. God of glory. Hallelujah. And the Lord warned him. But when God gives you over, you can't hear. When God gives you over, you can't see. When God gives you over, you will not be touched or influenced by the Spirit of God. It doesn't matter who sits beside you and feel the presence of God. You can feel it. You're giving over. Number one, his marriage was wrong. 
Number two, he killed the prophets of Jehovah. He raised up his own prophets. He did assignments without permission from God. Now he's about to go to Raymond Gilead. He called his prophets that he raised up. And he asked his prophets, not God's prophets, his prophets. Should we go up against Ramoth Gilead? And the prophet said, go and prosper. The Lord will give you the land. Jehoshaphat heard what the prophet says. But there's something in Jehoshaphat that did not sit comfortable. Jehoshaphat asked the question, is there not here a prophet of the Lord that we may inquire of him? Is there not another prophet? The king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, There is yet one man, Micaiah by name, by whom we may inquire. But the king says, I hate him. He does not speak good concerning me, but evil. But Jehoshaphat said, Let not the king say so. And the word of the Lord said that they sent a messenger for Micaiah. And when the messenger got there, he said to Micaiah, he said, now make sure you speak like the other prophets. For the other prophets said, go and prosper. And he was warned by the messenger. But I heard to the messenger as the Lord liveth what the Lord said shall I speak hallelujah whatever God says that's what I'm going to say glory be to God I won't add to what God said I won't take away from what God said as the Lord liveth hallelujah glory be to God Micaiah came and stood before two kings undaunted in his face looking at the king as he rebukes the prejudice of Ahab and Ahab looked at Micaiah and says Raymond Gilead is ours shall we go up or shall we forbear and immediately Micaiah responded and said go and prosper for the Lord shall deliver into thy hand the king of Syria. Amen. You could sense the bitterness and the irony and the sarcasm of the prophets. Hallelujah. And, and Ahab knew it was not the word of the Lord. For immediately he said to Micah, how many times shall I adjure you? That you tell me nothing but that which the Lord say unto you. Hallelujah. But I heard Micaiah says, Hallelujah. I hear the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne and the host of heaven standing by on the right hand. And I heard says, who will persuade Ahab? And Micaiah said, a spirit came forth and stood before the Lord and said, I will persuade Ahab. And the Lord said, how will you persuade Ahab? And the spirit said, I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of the prophets. And they prophesied a lie unto Ahab. 
what has become of sin nobody talks about it anymore can I get a witness but I rise to tell the church sin has a deceivableness in its nature hallelujah there's so many great men great women has been brought down by sin that's why Solomon said guard your heart for out of it are the issues of life fight your heart that's where idolatry is protect your heart that's where idolatry is your heart my heart is the manufacturing plant of idolatry can I get a witness Jesus Christ is the only celebrity in this house can I get a witness that's why he said if I be lifted up if I be lifted up I will draw all men unto me come on let's lift up Jesus we need a healing we need miracle in the house but sin will create some celebrity in your life what I'm telling you Jesus Christ is the only celebrity who set up on this rock will build my church and the gates of hell hallelujah 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 it takes only one lie a week to become a habitual lie Ahab 
from the words of my Kaya. Because my Kaya said, if you come back in peace, if you step back on the borders of Israel in peace, Jehovah has not spoken to me. Hallelujah. That must have troubled the king. That when he put the army in array for battle, something gone in his spirit. And the Bible said he disguised himself. He took off his royal robe and went into the battle as a common soldier. But even though he stripped himself of his royal robe and his royal chariot, God knows him. Hallelujah. You can't hide from God. Whether shall I flee from his presence? If I take the wings of the morning and fly to the uttermost part of the earth, even there, Lord. If I make my bed in hell, for what fear? You have searched me and know me. I can't hide from God. For the darkness and the light is for the light unto thee. Ahab changed his garments. Tried to disguise himself in battle. But when they went into battle, the word of the Lord says that the king of Syria said, this battle is not against armies. This battle is against one man. When you trouble God, God will trouble you. The king of Syria said to his soldiers, I'm looking for one man. Yes. And when you find that one man, that battle is over. Sometimes God does a search. God search the house. God search the church. Hallelujah. The battle is against one man, the king of Israel. When you find him, the battle is over. And he had disguised himself, went into the battle as a common soldier, fighting. Jehoshaphat was mistaken as the king of Israel. Because he went into a battle that he didn't belong. He almost lost his life. Because he went into a battle and he did not get permission from God. Talk with me, sir. If he 
cannot join whom God has rejected. And Jehoshaphat was about to make the same mistake. He almost lost his life. The battle was against Ahab. God was against Ahab. The host of heaven was against Ahab. For he sold himself to do wickedness. The word of the Lord says that a certain man had a sight of Ahab, even though he wore disguised garments. A certain man. God raised up a certain man. When the arrow struck him, he said, I'm wounded. Hallelujah. He asked his armor bearer to take him, but he would not. But they drove his chariot to the very place where a prophecy was made. Because when he consented to the death of Naboth, the prophet declared a word from the law. The dogs that lick the blood of neighbor, God is going to lick your blood also. Hallelujah. And they drove his chariot while he was losing blood as his blood ran in the chariot brought it to the place hallelujah and they washed his chariot and the dogs came and licked his blood the king of Israel hallelujah my God beloved let me ask you a question in my closing this afternoon how will you die Hallelujah. How will you die? Will dogs lick your blood? Or will you die like John the Baptist? For the word of the Lord says, when they beheaded to John the Baptist, some holy men came and took his body and buried it. Some holy men, some sanctified men, Oh, <laughs> 
For there are some groups of people that will never be saved. Those who align themselves to fallen angels will never be saved. For the word of the Lord says that God has reserved them in chains of darkness until the day of damnation. Hallelujah. They are reserved in chains of darkness. Hallelujah. They have aligned themselves to fallen angel. They have given them, sold themselves over to wickedness. Hallelujah. The next category of people is those who quench the spirit. Who's trying to put the spirit out. The devil is a liar. Apostle Paul said, quench not the spirit. We are not your shield. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Let the anointed functions. Glory be to God. And so I close by saying today, my God, the dogs came and the dogs licked the blood of the king of Israel as the prophet had declared. Hallelujah. And Ahab died. Hallelujah. Because God was against him. Hallelujah. He sold himself to do wickedness against the God of Israel. There has not arisen another man like unto Ahab who has given himself over unto iniquity. Hallelujah. Come on. He convicted the neighbor for his vineyard. He is the king. He has vineyards. He has horses. He has gold. He has palaces. Hallelujah. He has everything to make him comfortable. But this one man has his vineyard. And the king convicted Naboth for his vineyard. Naboth lost his life. But he lost it in honor. For Naboth held on to a integrity and a principle. It is my father's inheritance. It is not for sale. Even though they stoned him and he died, the blood of Naboth still cried from the earth. It is my father's inheritance. Hallelujah. The thing about the name is that the victories that he had, he gave himself, amen, the glory that it is because of my army. Why I win? The devil is a liar. Whatever victories we have, to God be the glory. It is not by might, it is not by power, it is by my spirit. Say the Lord, touch somebody and tell them, I made it this far because of Jesus. Come on, testify to somebody, I made it this far because of the grace of God. I couldn't make it on my own. It is the grace of God. If it had not been for the Lord on my side, tell me where. Stand everybody in this house. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory be to God. Thank God.
In closing. Ahab changed the worship of Israel. Have you changed your worship? Is that the way you used to worship? When you just met God? Hallelujah. The altar is open. As we go.